Well, good morning, boss man. Tell everybody you just got home. Pollyanna came by last night and picked you up, and you spent the night over there. Then you came back here, and I don't know what you were doing, but you look dead tired. Well, you're going to have a little bit of time to rest because i got to head over and visit Scott Michaels over at Dearly Departed today. Then we'll come back and see you. Does that sound cool? Well, good morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Well, the bad news today is that my coffee machine broke this morning. Went to turn it on, and it had no life. Flatline. Beep. So I had to uh, go on Amazon.com, and the good news is that I ordered a new one, and it's supposed to be delivered before this evening. So hopefully that will happen. And I'm going to head out and do uh, a little Scott Michaels visit today because uh, I have a few items for him for my last road trip. Now I'm going to be taking off in, what, two days for my next one, but I wanted to tell you I was invited. I got a phone call today. I got a special invite to a special opening on May 30th that I'm going to tell you guys about later. And I'm not allowed to tell you something else, but there's something else that I was invited to also today that's going to be happening in a few months, but they asked me not to say anything, so I'm just going to tease you with it now. So, Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, stop number one, dearly departed. I love this crazy building. A black muffler man? I'd say I'm in the right place, wouldn't you? So as we're getting ready to head out north again, I was just talking to Scott about my trip and he was showing me this picture and kind of telling me something I should check out when I go out there. This is the uh, the original crash site and everything, but this was a mile marker. Is that what it was, Scott? Yeah. A mile marker from off to the side. And I said, so you're a big Jimmy Dean fan, right? And he showed me his arm. I'd never noticed this. <laughs> check that out. Wow, man. Yeah, have you ever made the trek out to Fairmount, to his hometown? No, I haven't yet. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. In fact, I just got... Uh, you know, there's a famous picture of Jimmy uh, sitting in a casket. You ever seen that? Yeah, picture? yeah. Was they it, said it was like a week or two weeks. It was a few weeks. months. It was February, and he was killed in, 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 in uh, October. But that was a, when he went to visit his hometown, Fairmount, he... Uh, was with a photographer and another friend, and they were just going around and photographing Jimmy, and Jimmy just happened to hop into a, a casket. It was in the back of a, uh, a furniture store, not a funeral home, but a furniture store. And uh, they just literally tore down that, uh, that furniture store. And uh, these, uh, this is from the wall. This is from the wall that was right behind Jimmy in the photograph. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's up. It's, here we are grabbing pieces of junk anymore. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, this is James Dean history, and, and we love James Dean. That's incredible. No, I'm, I'm pretty in touch with a lot of the, Jean, the Dean, they call them Deaners. Yeah, that would have been from right back here. That's crazy. We're going to go back and see if there's anything new since I've been here. I think this is new since you were here. These are some of uh, the remains of Shorty Shea. Oh, was, wow. the ranch hand at Spawn Ranch. Oh, yeah. Uh, when the coroner uh, removed his body, uh, they must not have done an amazing job of it because there were still human bones left up there, and that's not trying... They were, they were scientifically proven to be human bones in the very spot where Shorty was. And someone I know made a, a, a Michael Chandles, who was, who was a, a good friend of Charles Manson's, was, uh, is a friend of mine. And, uh, and he had found some of the bones there, so he made a nice urn for it. And then he was transferring them, and some of them didn't make it, so he gave them to me. So, because we knew we'd take care of it. Oh, yeah. So wow. It's, it's here. The, uh, the red fox thing you gave us is here. Oh, yeah. That's from, yep. Yeah, Scott gave me a, a piece of John Denver's airplane, which is right there. There's some of the fiberglass from it, as well as the autopsy report. So that right there is the, the actual plane. And you can even tell exactly, I mean, I would guess where it came off because of the coloration. Is that the, uh, the stripe, yeah, maybe? I never really looked at it, to be honest with you, in that regard, because the one of, that's just a picture of it. There's a picture of John Denver with it down there, and I, I've never really blown that up too much to look at it, but uh, that's a, an example of, and the little one is the actual one. Wow, and thank you so much. I, it's pretty cool to have a, a piece of this, as weird as that sounds to say. <laughs> oh, oh you're, with, 
you're, <laughs> you I'm in good with, company. Uh, you are with people who understand. Oh, that's new. Patrick Swayze? Yeah. Yeah, some of his hair, too. <laughs> that's, you know, seeing, like, the last interviews with Patrick Swayze, just, I mean, he just seemed like such a good guy. I mean, it just, wow. That wood piece right there is a train whistle used by Johnny Cash, signed by Johnny Cash. That's pretty cool. Now I'm a big Mark Boland fan, and that's a piece of the tree that he and his wife hit in the Mini Cooper that ended up killing him. And Scott was just telling me that he was just out there and that that tree has, because so many people have been out there, has it completely rotted away. He said now it's just like a stump with a barrel on it. So I was always wanting to go out and vlog that, and I probably still will, but it's kind of weird to know that tree's no longer there. Oh, check that out. That's a flower from the funeral of Charles Manson. Scott was telling me that he was, you know, put on ice for quite a while until they could figure out who got the body. And he was just showing me a, um, a casket photo. And we looked down at it and he's got like Mickey Mouse gloves. And Scott said that his hands had pretty much deteriorated from, you know, just them trying to figure out how long or who, who had the rights to bury him. So they ended up cremating him after the ceremony. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Here is the, uh, the autopsy report, and there's the uh, piece of the plane. Yeah. All right, let's hit the post office. We have some Patreon rewards to get sent out. Take a look at the back of everything on that car. It says, you asked for karma, receive it. All right, let's get this knocked out. The automated machines work again. Let's go. Well, let's make our way down the boulevard and we'll do the vlog down here today. Well, since 1927 in New York City, there's been a staple, a restaurant that everyone has known and heard of called Sardi's. And in 1932, they decided to make a sister restaurant here in Los Angeles. I'm gonna show you guys where that used to be. So in New York, Sardi's was a very, and still is, a very popular pre and post show theater hangout for actors and, well, mainly the actors. It's known for being a very popular celebrity hangout. So that mentality that worked in New York, they decided to bring here because this, at the time, in the 30s and 40s, this was Vine Street, up and down this street was where most of the theaters were. There were a lot of radio theaters, a lot of performance theaters up and down here. So they decided to give it a try with the same idea, trying to appeal to the same crowd. And so they set up Sardi's right over here. Well, right here it was. Right there where that strip club is, that showgirls, thousands of beautiful girls and three ugly ones. That from 1932 until after World War II was Sardi's. Now Sardi's is probably most known for its caricatures lining the walls. I mean, now it's been pretty much what it's been coveted by, and even when you find any old relics from this Hollywood Sardi's, it's usually in the form of a postcard replicating one of those caricatures. Now what's interesting is that in New York, they've tried to keep the same caricature artists as long as they could. I believe in the entire uh, time that they've had that Sardi's, they've only had three artists because it's been quite a big talk of debate because if the actor or actress that they made the caricature of would come in and saw their caricature and didn't like it, a lot of times they would never come back or maybe not come back for years until they heard that there was a new caricature that had been put up. So it became very important. Now this Sardis unfortunately didn't last as long and didn't have the same appeal, I guess, that the other one did, although it was a popular hangout of Charlie Chaplin, Joan Crawford, and Maurice Chevalier. After this one shut down, it became the Shy Chicago Club, and then a few years after that, they would take the Sardi sign, basically, flip the S, and it would become Zardi's at Jazzland, and it would become a jazz club for years. Now, once this freaking bus gets out of the way, you can see where the uh, the tattoo parlor is and everything over here. That at the time was called the Blue Room and that was a bar. And then over here on this end, 
uh, where you can see there's like a uh, kind of a garage door opening place. That was the Horton and Converse um, pharmacy drugstore. It's pretty crazy history. You'd walk by this any day of the week and you'd never know that there was a historic Sardis here in Hollywood. There's no sign, there's nothing to commemorate it other than if you do some deep digging, you see those old photos. Now some of you old Hollywood historians might remember a radio show called Breakfast in Hollywood. It was hosted by a man named Tom Brenneman, and he actually created and came up with the idea while eating here at Sardi's. He loved his idea so much in 1940 that he got it put on the air and actually hosted it from here, and it was originally called Breakfast at Sardi's before they moved it away from here and changed the name to Breakfast in Hollywood. And you can tell that it still has some of the old feel and some of that old charm to it with this mosaic tiling and all that stuff to it. I don't know if that's original, but it's original to one of those businesses, I'm sure. If it wasn't Zardy's at Jazzland, it could have been the Shy Chicago or who knows. Kind of hard to believe this used to be Sardi's. But something tells me just by looking at the, uh, the mosaic tiling on there and how old it is and it's falling off and everything that that might be some of the original stuff. Look at that. Might be. Now Shelly Winters used to tell me jokingly that she used to gain a lot of her weight at Sardi's because that was always her go-to place after a performance on Broadway or anywhere in New York City. She said no matter whether it was a day or night performance or if she was just upset and needed to uh, have some comfort food, she would always hit the New York Sardis, so... I wonder if she ever went to that one. Now let's go home and get John, take him to the park for a bit. Well, I just opened up the mail and Ja, of course, got a treat, but there was no name attached, so whoever sent it, thank you. And no joke, look at this, my coffee machine just arrived, my new espresso machine. Last one died this morning and the new one just showed up. That is not bad, that's like... Six hours delivery, eight hour delivery. I got the cheap one. I don't know if it's any good, but it had like, I don't know what, four stars, four and a half stars or whatever. So the one that was about $50 more had pretty much the same rating. So I figured I'd just go with the Amazon deal of the day kind of option. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, that's nice to see in your neighborhood, isn't it? That's always fun. Free needle. Yep, he's ready for some park time. He knows. That didn't take long. He's surveying the situation. Gotta love the puppy playtime. Alright, Ja! You gotta play with like 12 dogs today. How awesome was that? Let's get out of here, huh? Let's go get you some food. Well, time to call it a night, guys. I want to thank Sharon Fairley, Mark Collins, and Ferris Sales. Everyone else, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with Scott Michaels today and going and seeing the old Sardis. Have a great night, and good bye. If I was a guy, I would try